Today we're going to see a collaboration between the artist Nancy Callan and Catherine Gray. You may recognize Catherine from the glass-blowing TV show Blown Away, where she was a judge. Nancy worked for many years on the glass-blowing team of Lino Talia Pietra, the great Venetian master. Both artists are currently featured in an exhibition, Venice and American Studio Glass. Glass blowing has been a completely male-dominated profession for almost 2,000 years. These two artists have been pioneers for women in glass blowing. Their undeniable skills have opened the doors to the glass shop for all of today's young women in glass. We will see them make a large clown's horn sculpture for a joint exhibition they're going to do, which is themed about clowns. Glass blowing is a team sport. The team that they'll work with today is Ben Cobb, Sarah Gilbert, Courtney Branham, now Yamamoto, and Blaine Steiner. Nancy has made a bubble of clear glass. This bubble is going to become the bulb of the clown's horn. Catherine comes over with a blob of colored glass and cut it off. And then Nancy pushes the colored glass backward towards the pipe until it entirely coats her original bubble. The glass that she's added is black glass. It looks orange because the glass is hot. Sarah has coated the bubble with another layer of clear hot molten glass. Each time we dip it into the furnace and coat it, it's called taking a gather. Now Nancy is squeezing the glass with a tool called the jacks. She's making a crease in the glass and that crease will be the place where we can break the glass away from the metal pipe. As she squeezes it, her assistant holds a wooden paddle in front of her arm to shield her from the heat. Now she's shaping it with a pad of wet newspaper. As long as the newspaper is wet, the paper doesn't burn too much and it doesn't leave any marks as she shapes the glass. Now we're going to add a stripe of clear glass. That stripe is going to become the seam of the bulb. We're going to shape it with a tool called the copa. And we're going to leave that stripe uh, sticking out 3D so it'll be a physical seam. Ben is cleaning it up a little. Shaping the glass with a newspaper. You can see his assistant sh shielding his arm from the heat. We've blown the glass up a bit, so now the bulb is more bulbous. Nancy's putting on s some finishing detail. We're going to drill a small hole in the bulb where, so we can inflate the bulb later on when it's transferred to another pipe. Now we're getting ready to break the bulb off the original pipe. We attach a second steel rod called the punty. The second steel rod will hold the bulb from the bottom while we shape the top. Nancy's making a little notch in the punty, so we have a place where we can break it off. Nancy's going to take her tweezers, dip them in water, drip a little water where she wants the glass to break. A little tap and off it comes. The break wasn't exactly even, but we can fix that. The 
We'll stretch out the glass with a pair of flat tweezers. Now Ben has made a second bubble, and this bubble is going to become the bell of the horn. The bell is the kind of long trumpet-like part of a horn. Squeezing once again with the newspaper, making the long part of the bell. Checking the dimensions. Ben's going to crisp up the top of the bell. He's holding the jacks on one side and holding the paddle against the top. Make a nice sharp corner. Now we're going to attach the bell to the bulb. Hot glass sticks to hot glass. When we press the two together, they'll be stuck forever. We're going to break the pipe away on the bell side. And score the glass with a wet file. Hold it and a little tap and off it comes. Softening the opening on the bell with the torches. Once again, we're stretching it out with the flat tweezers to thin it out. The glass at the opening is always a little thick. We trim away all that thick glass. Ben heats up the glass, concentrating the heat on the opening. Widening the opening at the bottom of the bell. Now we're going to open that bell wide. When we spin it, the centrifugal force forces the edges of the bell out. Do a little shaping, give it the proper taper. Make sure the end is flat. As Ben shapes it, his assistants are making sure that all the parts of the sculpture are warm at the same time. If you allow one to get too cold, it will crack spontaneously and the whole thing will fall on the floor. So in an ideal world, we want all the parts of the sculpture to be a nice even temperature. We'll drip a little water on the punty to break it off. Give it a little tap. Sarah carries the finished sculpture to our annealing oven where it would be cooled slowly overnight.